Hey, what's up, everyone? Today on Trust and Believe, we are having Dr. Lauren Fitzgerald. She is going to talk everything vitamins, how to use them, how to choose them, and how they will make your body feel better and improve your overall quality of life. Sit back and get ready to trust and believe. Somebody say it again. No, no. Oh. What's up? He's better than Oprah. Come on, y'all. This is Sean T, and it's time to trust and believe. Talking to my sister from another mister. I'm so excited you know to talk it. to you, Lauren. So what you guys don't know, and I think I need to set the stage for this conversation that we're going to have today, and that is Lauren and I text all the time, we leave voice memos, and I'm one of the only people that can make her laugh out loud. I'll say that first. (laughs) But, um, But Lauren, let's dive in because, you know, you are a functional medicine doctor, and I know a lot of people follow you on Instagram, and they get, they get taught by you every single morning. I love that you post at the same exact time. Your followers know what they're going to get. But what I really want people to understand is why you got into functional medicine in the first place. Man, because I realized that at my my mid-30s, I didn't learn everything that there is to learn about health and wellness in medical school. I was a a practicing anesthesiologist, and um, I had my own struggles with my weight, despite me being hardcore fitness instructor, hardcore gym goer, um, following a strict, you know, low fat, eat multiple times a day, uh, you know, everything that I was told to do, and I had followed, but... Um, I realized that I had basically <laughs> become insulin resistant because of the advice that I was given from our, our medical and you know, fitness community. And, and that was when I first realized, okay, there's something else. And this is, this is when I went to a functional medicine doctor and realized, okay, I didn't learn it all. And so my question is, because I think that um, a lot of times people see how someone has transitioned their career or their life or whatever it is and they don't necessarily know the struggle that it took to get there so how hard was it for you to make that transition because we were having a conversation the other day and you were telling me and we don't have to get into specifics but you were telling me that in the OR for people who don't know that the operating room you were one of the only people who were going against some of the medical norms because of your beliefs in function of medicine and the way your body should work in your immune system. So how tough was it for you to transition and I guess be supported by people in the medical community? Um, it was it was really tough. First of all, let's talk about the financial that I left because as an anesthesiologist, I made a lot of money. And I liked what I did, but there was that moment of, realization that this is now going against the whole reason that I started to go to medical school when I was, you know, in my young twenties. Um, I, I had a lot of people basically, um, (laughs) question my sanity when I left a really high paying career that took me 12 years, four years of college, four years of med school, four years of residency. And I only practiced full-time anesthesia for five, six years and, and left it against the advice of most people. But I, I knew like I wasn't being fulfilled with my main purpose, the reason why I went to medical school in the first place. Last week, <laughs> last week I contracted COVID-19 or I should say I tested positive. I'm sure I contracted it a little bit before that. And obviously I called you because yep. you told me on a phone call one day, don't you ever hesitate to call me when you're stressed about health or anything like I was going to say finances but you didn't tell me that but um, <laughs> that's Chris that's, that's, that's Chris. who you can call for that that's <laughs> your amazing partner but yes um so you know I did and I was just I was just floored with the first thing you said was vitamins and you talked about vitamins and about my ethnicity and how important it was. And so today I really want to dive into everything vitamins for our listeners who say, hey, I get everything from food or I don't take my vitamins or maybe they take a one a day like I have in my, you know, my cabinet. So can you just give us 
a rundown, and this may sound very elementary for some people, but why we need vitamins. And then I think specifically, if someone says, well, I eat really healthy, you know, I don't need to take vitamins. Like what, why should we really have vitamins as a supplement for our, our nutrition and our body function? That's such a great question because I think a lot of people don't have fundamental understanding of how the vitamins, the minerals, the phytonutrients, all of the the properties that food gives us are the building blocks of our everything, our immune system, our hormones, our neurotransmitters, the way that our body can heal itself. Like the, it's just like the the analogy I always use is if you're building a house and you have a dump truck that builds that brings a whole bunch of styrofoam to build your foundation, you'd look at it and be like, no, 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 I need concrete. I need a, a solid foundation to build a house that won't get knocked down with the wind, right? So our food is where we're supposed to get a large majority of everything. But fast forward to 2020, we've done a lot of damage to specifically our soil. So the fact is, I would rather people get a large majority of their vitamins, minerals, and phytonutrients from food. But if you live in 2020, you're not getting everything that you need. And magnesium is a great example. So magnesium, when I see my patients, I'm all for, I don't want them to be on a ton of supplements all day, every day, the rest of their life, right? I want them to get it from food. But there's certain supplements like magnesium that they'll probably always have to supplement, even if they're eating all organic, all non-GMO, because the fact is that we've depleted our soil and that's where vegetables and, and plants from the ground get the magnesium from. So this is why supplementation is definitely necessary. And vitamin D, which I'm sure we're going to talk about today, is another one that we're supposed to get from the sun. But guess what? If you live in a certain part of the world, if you are black, if you are older, if you are um, have more adipose tissue, so I don't like to use the word fat, but if you have more fat cells, you have likelihood of being vitamin D deficient. So this is another place that supplementation is hugely beneficial. Thank you. All right. First of all, can you define, uh, did you say phytonutrients? Yes. Can you define that? <laughs> They're basically just chemicals in food that help um, enzymatic processes. So an enzyme process is basically you get, need to get a chemical from point A to point B, and it needs an enzyme to get it to, to cross that bridge, right? So phytonutrients are one of the many things that food gives us along with the vitamins, the minerals, um, uh, antioxidants, all of these, these elements of food that our body uses as different building blocks, right? They're the, and, in the micronutrient de department, if you will. Right. And then one more time, because I think it may come up later, and a lot of these answers I know, but I like to, I'm asking what I like to call the silly question because I just think like you know when we teach dance like you can't give them a whole eight, eight count without giving them one count you know so yes, yes. talk about antioxidants really fast because I think that people people hear that and it talks about in food and and it's just a word that's thrown out there in the grocery store for you to purchase something but people don't really know what antioxidants are not not everyone knows so can you define that as well Absolutely. So oxidation is a process. Think about an apple getting exposed to air and the, the changes that happen in that. Or avocado that's cut and you leave it out to air, the changes that happen to that. That's oxidation. And this is a natural process that our body has. And we actually make our own antioxidants. So not only do we make our own, but we get them from food as well. But these antioxidants basically fight the oxidation free radicals that happen from this process, this natural process. But there's definitely such thing as bad Balance. And living in 2020 with processed foods, with stress, with poor sleep, our bodies are making an excessive amount of oxidative free radicals. And so antioxidants are just a great way to supplement. Of course, you want to supplement in addition to a healthy diet with whole foods. I love it. All right. Let's get to the main vitamins. And then yes. I have some very specific questions about what happens when you walk into any pharmacy out there. I'm not going to give any specific names because, you know, sometimes I know you get pissed when you see stuff <laughs> and stores and you're like, they don't have the right stuff. So can you just run down the necessary things that we need to, we definitely need to have every single day, try to talk about how much of it we need, and then we'll get into later how to actually choose it and where to get it from. Absolutely. So before I say that, I want to remind your listeners that 
Your gut health is super important. And if you have a gut that's not doing one of the, it's many jobs, it's supposed to digest and absorb, it's not getting all of the stuff. So the, the first place that you should start is, do I have a healthy gut? And that's a totally different topic. But assuming that you have a healthy gut and that you are eating a, a diet full of whole foods, um, I will start with vitamin D. And especially because we are in the middle of this pandemic with COVID-19, um, the fact that we are not getting recommended to take vitamin D3 every single day because it's a super cheap supplement. I mean, you can supplement yourself all day, every day for a whole year for like less than 50 bucks. Like it is a super dirt cheap supplement. Um, but vitamin D has been, if you go to a great resource um, for a bunch of medical research, if you're geeky like me, is uh, Mercola.com. That's M-E-R-C-O-L-A. Dr. Mercola has this massive website that has tons of literature. And if you just go and search vitamin D in the search bar, you'll be linked to all of these research articles before COVID and after COVID that show how vitamin D is a important part of your immune system. And if we don't understand how important the immune system is by now, I don't know where you've been because vitamin D3 is one of those that truly anyone can take and everyone should be taking. And especially, like I said, if you have, if you've got darker skin, if you live in certain parts of the country, or if you have more fat cells and you're, it's because it's a fat absorbable uh, vitamin, then you probably will need more. So um, vitamin D3. So what, what dose did I tell you to take when you first messaged me? Do you remember? First thing, vitamin D3, and you need to take 50 thousand as i use a day yes. and i was like you want me to just get full off of vitamins i was just like <laughs> and then i said and then i said to lauren i was like i play tennis outside every day she was like well it's the winter time and you're black you're not even you're not getting enough as much even if you go outside every day you're not getting enough or as much as a white person would get because of the the pigmentation of your skin and the color of your skin. So some people, 50,000 may sound absolutely absurd and it feels that way. Uh, but I can tell you that after pounding myself with vitamin D, I swear. And Lauren said it. She was like, listen, nothing can cure COVID. There's no cure. But Lauren said, you're going to feel better with your immune system and what I'm prescribing you you're going to feel better. Anyway, go ahead. That was my answer. <laughs> I love it. Well, no, that, that gives me so many great uh, teaching points. So one, if you think about your immune system like an army, and if you put an army uh, up against a really terrible enemy and you don't give them the, the tools like the guns and the, the ammo and all of that kind of stuff, you can expect that it, it's not going to have a good outcome. So all you can see vitamins and whole foods as is you're giving your body the, the armament to go and attack this evil villain so it can win. And ultimately, that's what happened with you, right? So on one of the studies that they did, I believe that this was uh, came out of the UK in August, um, showed that high-dose vitamin D, so 100,000 on admission. So these were for COVID-tested positive people that now are so sick that they're getting admitted. So they gave them a loading dose, a, a super high dose of 100 uh, 100,000 IUs. And then on day three and day seven, I believe they gave them 50,000 units. So it's basically like just loading the, the system up. So here, here's some guns and ammo so you can at least fight this beast that you're already kind of in the middle of fighting, right? Um, there, there's still ultimately we'll have, it'll take time for us to see the, the proper dose and whatnot. Um, but I want to make sure that your listeners understand that you do not have to worry about a toxic dose in this acute setting from vitamin D. You can have toxicity from too much vitamin D over a long term, but we're talking about, you know, in a week, in a month, even in the matter of the last year, I'm not worried about, because I've been taking higher dose vitamin C, I mean, vitamin D, because we are in the middle of COVID, right? And I want to make sure that my immune system has everything it needs to fight it if I do get it. But get this. So most people, and this is why, I don't know why conventional medical doctors don't measure vitamin D reg levels regularly, but they've shown that people that have a vitamin D level between 40 and 60, pretty much over 40, and that's nanograms per milliliter, right? Um, basically, the, <laughs> the levels of likelihood of them getting COVID is like pretty much next to zero. And then if they have normal levels, the likelihood of them dying from COVID is literally zero. Mm. So 
why is this not, <laughs> like why is every single listener not taking vitamin D right now? Well, because we're not getting that message, right? But vitamin D is something that literally every single one of your listeners should be taking right now. What's the next vitamin? So in order for vitamin D to work properly, there are a couple of other key vitamins, okay? So vitamin K2, and um, IFM actually specifically says if you're over 40, everyone has to take vitamin K2 along with it. I'm pretty much on the, the, the page of I really think whether you're above 40 or below 40, you should be taking it with vitamin K2. You can get vitamin K2 from grass-fed meat, from um, eggs, from other sources like uh, organ meats. Um, mm. Some people, you know, my, my friends that are vegans are obviously missing out on vitamin K2. They get it from vitamin K1. There's two different types of K um, but K2 is the one specifically that, that is most beneficial. So in a lot of supplements, you will find them together because they, they both basically act uh, and, and help each other, right? Magnesium is also another one of those, and we'll talk about magnesium in a bit, but um, going back to K2, K2, if you think about K2 as basically like um, a butler, it's taking the calcium away from the arteries, the calcification that happens in the arteries, and it's bringing it to the bones and teeth. Like, hey, you, calcium, you don't want to go here. You want to come over here in the bones <laughs> and in the teeth, right? And, and that vitamin D and vitamin K are very crucial for that to happen. So, so this this is one of those things where you just automatically need to think, if I'm going to take vitamin D3, I need to be taking vitamin K2 and then magnesium. Magnesium is one of those supplements. So there are the last paper I read, there are over 330 different enzymatic reactions that happen in your body that require magnesium. And magnesium is one of the most deficient minerals in our body. Mm. It's the fourth most, most abundant mineral in our body. And, um, this is another thing that doctors typically don't measure. You, you want to specifically ask your doctor, hey, can you measure my vitamin D levels and measure my RBC magnesium level? That stands for red blood cell. That's the best way for you to be able to tell if you, need to ben if you would benefit from magnesium supplementation. But here's the thing. I don't get those tests on my patients because a vast, vast majority of people are deficient in it. So like vitamin D, you, you can't get too much orally where you're worried about it, but you definitely, like anything, you want to get talk with your doctor and get those le levels measured. All right, let's talk about vitamin C because a lot of times when people are sick, they then say, I'm going to take vitamin C. And I don't know the answer to this, but it's a conversation that I kind of wanted to have with you, which is it's somewhat annoying to me that people wait till they're sick. I mean, I waited till I was sick to take massive amounts of, you know, I take vitamins every day, but I was like, how do I, you know, enhance my immune system, right? So, right. which I learned that, okay, I also need to do this before being sick. But some Absolutely. people don't take vitamin C at all. They don't necessarily eat the healthiest. And then when they do get sick, the first thing they say is vitamin C, vitamin C, vitamin C, and they try to, you know, eat oranges or whatever. So I know that sounds funny, but it's, it's so no, but true. but it's true. It's what I most mean, people do. Growing up, that's when we, when I got sick, you know, I wasn't from the healthiest family. It was, here we have oranges and let's go buy some orange juice from the store that was full of sugar, right? It was yep. just like that. So yep. why do you think people wait until the last second? And then the bigger question is, is taking vitamin C after you, you get sick, how much is it helping as compared to if you took it every day? The great question. So first of all, yes, you should 100%. I, I, that is one of the, the supplements that I take daily. I, I take a 500 milligram supplement. Um, if I were to get COVID, I would dose up on that because vitamin C is definitely a very powerful um, cofactor in a lot of your immune system reactions. So vitamin C, if you just Google Linus Pauling, you can, he did a ton of research on vitamin C um, pretty much you, the, you can't take too much, but if you do take too much, your body will give you the signs and you'll just have diarrhea. So literally it's, you don't have to worry about, oh, it's I'm toxic dose. Am I going to have, you know, something bad like a seizure? No, you'll just have a little bit of diarrhea and that's your body's way of saying, okay, I've got enough vitamin C, but 
if I were to be in your shoes and get COVID, I would take 500 milligrams. And again, I want to make sure you understand you can only absorb up to about 500 milligrams from your GI tract of vitamin C. This is where IV nutrition comes in play. I know that you had some IV nutrition um, as well, and we offer it at Laura Marmed, but that way you get a whole dose because it bypasses the, the GI tract and the liver, the, the first pass metabolism. But vitamin C is, is super important. The fact is, though, that so many people, the, their go-to supplements If you look at the ingredients, a lot of people are not used to looking at ingredients at anything, especially not vitamins and supplements, right? But most of the, the, you know, immune boosting supplements that are full of vitamin C, if you look at them, they're full of sugar, artificial ingredients and, and coloring dyes and stuff like that. So not all supplements are made equal. Yeah, because it's sometimes you're, you say to yourself, okay, so this is candy, Let's go into the pharmacy. Let's talk about where we can get our vitamins. Now, I want to first say, you know, Larmar Spa, which is what the spa that Lauren owns in the Chicago area, is incredible. So if you are in the Chicago area, um, reach out to them. Follow them on Instagram. We'll have the link in the show notes. For those of you out there who really have no clue on where to go or it just makes you nervous to going to the store to know that you're not getting the sugar, to know that you're not getting the soy in your vitamin supplement products, please go follow Larimar Spa. What's the what's the handle? Is it Larimar Spa? It's 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 at Larimar Med LLC. Med. Yeah. yeah. At Larimar Med yeah. LLC. Um so I'll say that first, but let's talk about if someone can't reach out to you and they have to walk into a pharmacy or a health food store you know, let's let's talk about. I mean, this is. I don't know if you guys have ever seen Lauren go into the grocery store, but she be letting people know just because it's in this place is not the best thing for you to be to eat, right? Absolutely. I'm not. We're not throwing. You cannot, yeah, we're not throwing you anybody under the bus. The name, yeah, you cannot assume just because you're in a healthy grocery store that all of their products are are healthy and good for you. So right. yeah, so. The, the, the supplement industry is truly like the wild, wild west. There is no regulation. There's no way to see if you are getting what the, the bottle says you're getting. There is a lot of money to be made in the, the, the supplement industry. And um, I, I like to talk about the nutraceutical um, companies because pharmaceutical companies have a lot of regulation because the FDA, right? And then supplements have no regulation. So the nutraceuticals are the companies that basically have higher levels of checks and balances. And these are companies that functional medicine doctors like myself will rely on because I know that if I'm, if I want my patient to take X, Y, and Z supplement, because it's going to help them in their health, I want to make sure that they're getting exactly what I've, I've prescribed for them instead of them going to Amazon. And, you know, I hate to break it to you, but if you're getting your supplements from Amazon, they're probably fake. And, mm. and I don't know of a good way to test if the, the supplements are fake or not, but I know that there's a ton of fake Amazon supplements that are great with making the label look just like the brand that you think that you're going to get. Um, but this is why buying your, your supplements from a, a, a doctor like functional medicine, integrative medicine. Um, I know a lot of uh, naturopathic doctors and chiropractic doctors sell supplements from the nutraceutical companies as well. So this is why I, I wanted you to make sure that you were getting the good stuff. Mm-hmm. I love that. Um, you know, just kind of sidebar, when I was uh, with Dr. Elamine last for my stem cells, we actually talked about starting a line of recovery products for me. And awesome. I kind of wanted to talk to you about that, too, on the side. But I'm so interested in doing it now just from being on my recovery journey and then having COVID and really, you know, I, I don't know if you know this about me, but I used to I used to Google and diagnose myself with everything and be stressed oh, out. And now yeah. I go, if I Google, I know this maybe not the healthiest, healthiest thing, but I actually do Google studies. And I, you know, peer-reviewed studies because I hear you, uh, Sean Stevenson, <laughs> talk a lot about them. And yeah. so, you know, I try to redirect my focus from an answer on Google to what a study that has actually been done to, you know, 
to ease my mind. No, but that's a good point. I, I always joke. I'm like, don't do your research. And I say in air quotes, research on Dr. Google. Go to PubMed. Literally, mm. PubMed is where doctors go to search for research articles. So, like, for example, meditation. If you go to PubMed and, and, re- and search meditation, there is so many research journals that talk about the benefits of it. The fact that every single doctor doesn't recommend meditation blows my mind. Yeah. Ah, oh, it's so good. All right, I want to quickly switch to what you brought up earlier, which was the IV. Now, the first time I actually got an IV uh, with the Myers cocktail, if you will, was yep. at um, Dr. Elamine's office. And then when I got back to Phoenix, I found a, a great place here. And so my question is, for those of you who don't know, and I, Lauren can obviously talk about this a little more, but for those of you who don't know, you can go into, basically it's like a spa, and you yeah. sit down in a recliner chair in some places, and they give you an IV, and they pump you with all the, well, before they give you the IV, you actually get a menu. You're like, okay, like, you feel like you're in a bar, right? You get a menu, totally. and you're like, I'm going to get this drink, you know, IV'd Absolutely. into my arm. And it's so funny because a lot of people in there, if you go on a Monday or if you go on a Saturday, a lot of people in there are getting it because they're hungover. And I think it's hilariously just great because partly because I'm like, oh, there's a hangover cure. But then the other thing is I'm like, they're just going to keep on getting drunk because this is an option. (laughs) But anyway, um, but I really enjoy it. I get the Myers cocktail. You know, obviously, I'm going to talk. I'm going to let you talk about the things that are going in there. But my question is, you know, I go once a week. How much is the IV? How long is the IV really, you know, lasting for me, you know, as I leave, once I leave? And just everything in between. Well, you know, there's not a set answer for that question because all of the different ingredients that you put into your IV cocktail have different um, links that they last in the body. Like some are excreted right away, some are, are, are saved. So the how long it lasts in the body, I don't think anyone can really ask that or answer that, right? Um, but what I do want to make sure people understand is because the the fact that everything that we take in by mouth has to go through this first pass through our liver. And so our liver takes and and gets rid of and excretes a lot of the stuff. So this is why even if you're taking all good oral supplements and you have a a healthy GI tract that digests and absorbs them, you're still not absorbing 100% of the, the vitamins and minerals that you're supplementing with, right? And so this is where IV hydration comes in. And you know, the Myers cocktail actually, it, it started, it started with this doctor, uh, Dr. Myers, who literally, look, we've been in the ER, we've seen um, people that come in drunk, alcoholics, you know, whatever, come in and get what we call banana bags all the time because we are the pharmacist in the hospital makes this bag full of different vitamins. And, and the thing that makes it yellow is the B vitamins. And they actually have that smell that's mm. like, ooh, that smells like, <laughs> yeah. But you see, so we've seen the benefits that it does for our, you know, our alcohol toxic you know, patients. And this one doctor who will forever, his name be forever remembered, um, Dr. Myers was like, uh, we should offer this to other people outside of the hospital because how many people would benefit from this? Just, you know, and of course the first thing was alcohol, but you don't have to have a hangover to come and be, benefit from IV nutrition. Can you just talk, talk about the your spa, why these spas are beneficial and, you know, the... I think what's most, why it's beneficial, but why should you, even as a healthy person, go there? Because I feel like a lot of people, like me, I didn't focus on going to this until I got stem cells, I got in a boat accident, my body was completely destroyed. Mentally, I was, oh, I can still cry about it now, like how stressed I was mentally, and people wait. And so... Um, why should people make this a part of their either weekly or monthly schedule to really visit your spa or spas like this around the country? Man, your your body is is the house that you live in your entire life. And if, if your your house was built in, you know, I was born in 1980. If I didn't do any maintenance to it, um, I cannot expect it to be a, a nice thing when I, I'm older, right? And, you know, a, a place like Laura Marmed is all about helping people 
take back their health and then optimize it. So, you know, my, I have functional medicine patients that have struggled with, you know, autoimmunity or diabetes, or they just want to get off of prescription medicines that in their core, they don't believe they need to be on the rest of their life. Um, I will help get them to a great place of health and then optimize it to the next level. So Laura Marmed, it's it literally, I, it's crazy because manifestation, you, you, the power of your thoughts is real. It was literally this time last year that I had just had a vision of like, I want to go back to medicine and practice functional medicine, but I want to offer all these things that I have been paying other services for. Mm -hmm. I've always used cryotherapy. I've always used red light therapy. I've always gotten massage therapy regularly, infrared sauna, um, the IV lounge, that, those kind of things were huge in California that I would get all the time. These are all things that I believe in because I know that they optimize my health. And the fact is that I believe that what we think getting older looks like has been a lie that we've been sold. And I want to give the gift to my patients and the people that follow me of having a life like my great grandmother. She freaking mowed her lawn at 98 because she could, but she had a whole lifetime of investing in her health and taking care of her whole her, her temple and she lived to 105 and literally it was just her body was like, okay, I'm, I'm good. But she had an amazing quality of life for the first hundred something years of her life. That I believe is possible for all of us, but it doesn't just happen by chance and it doesn't happen by hoping. So that's what Laura Marmet is. If I had a mic that I could drop, I would drop it. <laughs> this mic is too expensive to be playing around like that. There are people out there who are like, oh, those saunas and those things. And, you know, you know, if I get getting in a hyperbaric chamber, like that that's just all fluff. Like, it's just a thing. Like, what do you say to those people? Because that's what a lot of people do. They're like, you know, I think people, when they see you on your Instagram, they see you in your, in the red light room, which I actually love. Yep. It's a little sultry and healing at the same time. Thank you. Thank but, you. But you know, some people are like, it's just light. You know, what about those people? I know it's hard to break the barrier for the non-believers in other types of medicine, but what do you say to those people? I mean, I, I love those kind of people because those are the kind of people that at the end of the day, if they just trust and believe that maybe this might be something that might change their, their life or their condition, and then they'll do it, they'll see. I mean, red light therapy, that's one of those things. Like our physiology was meant to be exposed to these different wavelengths of light from the sun, but we've been living indoors. And so if we expose our body to the light that we were naturally supposed to and have evolved to be exposed to, guess what? We're gonna function better. It, I mean, truly, it is getting back to the way we were designed, and that's all biohacking is. You know, the, the cryotherapy, it's, it's, you know, we know that cold therapy helps decrease inflammation, and, um, you know, athletes have been using it forever. So instead of jumping in an ice bath for 30, 40 minutes, jump in a cryotherapy chamber for three minutes and get all of the same benefits. And experience it for yourself. I mean, what's the worst thing that ha can happen? You invest a little bit of money, and then nothing happens. I, I just know that that won't happen. And that's why like all of these things were like, I've used myself, I believe in them and I want to offer them to other people. So that's it. There you go. <laughs> Everyone, Dr. Lauren Fitzgerald, please follow her on social media. All of her information will be in the show notes and please go out and make sure you get your vitamins, stay as healthy as possible, especially during this pandemic and beyond, because as you heard Lauren say, her grandmother lived to be 105 years old. And I know one thing, even though I don't want to be cutting grass, I want to be out playing tennis at 103. OK, thank you. It's all about your quality of life, ladies and gentlemen. So if you do the best you can do to improve your health, you will improve your quality of life. Lauren, I'm sure I'll be texting you after this interview is over. Thank you so much for your time. Love you. Mwah. Love you too.